Park today and take a look at some of the, the rolling stock out there. This um, Lambo and the green Merc, they were there again. Yeah. I didn't see anything else. Oh, I saw a nice white beetle with chrome. Uh, did you see those hubcaps on it? Because that, that like caught... the retro <laughs> caps. They're really cool, aren't they? That caught my attention right off as I, I pulled in. Yeah. You know, you do the quick look. It's like, oh, ah. and I was like, whoa. Nice. Yeah, you can't miss them. You're blinded by yeah, them. Yeah, well, that's it. If you crash the car into the, <laughs> the building site. <laughs> Public service announcement. Yeah, it's like, you know, chrome. There's no. a car in the car park <laughs> in directly in line with the sun with chrome wheels. You, you see that with the, the Twin Towers here in Dubai on a sunny day. And that, when, it's, when it's hitting and ricocheting off and you can physically see the beam yeah. and you're, all I'm thinking is if there's a paraglider or someone out there, they're a goner. You're done. Yeah, you're just finished, so. Yeah, it's nice to, it's nice to, like you say, it's nice to see it when it's like coming off of the Burj Al Arab yeah. or yeah. whatever. It looks quite picturesque. I won't like to be landing a helicopter on top of it. You go, oh man, I'm, I'm with you. I'm 100% with you there. I talked to a helicopter pilot about that once. And I was like, oh, I feel, feel like I've lived here long enough now because I've seen a helicopter. Because we were at AAA in Al Kuz, we were opposite, like directly opposite right. the Jalaram. So we'd see them all the time. And I talked to the guy, I was like, oh, I saw some, I said, have you done it? He said, yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a rite of passage if you're a, you're a helicopter pilot from anywhere in the world, you've got to land on there because it's really, Iconic, but it's really difficult. He said the wind is bad enough because it's on the sea and it blows around and you're high up, obviously. Yeah. But obviously where they've got the um, the, the structure of the sort of exoskeleton of the building, uh -huh. it creates a wind tunnel either side. <laughs> oh no. So it's, it's, it's quite hairy trying to, trying to land a helicopter. So every time you put that, every time they would put one of those down, it's like, whew, yeah. it again. And that's, it's the only time you truly realize how big that building is. I mean, I've been inside it. Like, yeah but you don't realize how big it is even driving up to it until you see how minuscule the helicopter is landing on it. <laughs> like, whoa, how far away is that? And it's, it's when the helicopter's landed and then you can't see it anymore. It's yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, you sort well. of see them coming down and thinking, yeah. must be behind it, it must be miles yeah. away. Yeah. No, nope. it's just a huge building. Yeah. That's one of the casualties of this, of, of the pandemic, is I don't see as many helicopters. I mean, I see helicopters, but I don't see them landing on as many of the buildings. I don't yeah. see as much of the helicopter tourism. You space. always get the from the police academy. Yeah. You always get the, the black ones going up from up and down from there. But otherwise, yeah, you don't see as much of the tourists and yeah. the, the fly over the city helicopters, do you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, there we go. Uh, are we ready to get started? Are we ready to rock and roll here? We'll get started. <laughs> the, the ready bit, that's... that's uh, has to be the what, what do you got there? What are you drinking today? Is that uh you just drinking tonic or is that a Red Bull it's lemon? A tropical Red Bull. Oh man. Yeah. Is, it, is it any good? No. <laughs> it's fine. It's great. It's Red Bull. Yeah. Send me all the free it's Red good. Bull. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. It's better than the other stuff that tastes like, like the, the true Red Bull. I always think it tastes yeah, like. Yeah, the, the original. I think if you're going to do Red Bull, you do the original. It just right? tastes like. Yeah. Do you know when you make jelly, jello? Uh huh. When you make it with the powder. Uh huh. I always think it tastes like that okay. with toilet cleaner in it. <laughs> so basically, Red Bull will not be sponsoring us, is what you're telling no. me. I mean, I, I obviously got it to do a job, <laughs> and there was other options there, and I always go for the Red Bull. I just wanted the coconut one, which okay. they didn't have. Co did, really? There's coconut flavored Red Bull? Yeah, the white can, yeah, but they didn't have it. So. And you drink that? Yeah, that one's actually all right. Okay. Yeah, I'm a big thing. I've got a big thing for coconut. Coconut. So you like the pina colada? No. No, but it's coconut. It is. It is but coconut, but there's, you know. No. You, you draw a line. There's, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, if, if it didn't look as pina colada as it looks, you might be a bit better. Just feel like sort of, you know, Barry Manilow. There you go. Just, that, that is not a I bad think, thing. That's all I think of when I, when I see it, and it you know. The Copacabana. Yeah, they're Copa, Copacabana. The yeah, so it's I, the hottest town north of Havana. And Barry Manilow will, Manilo will not be appearing on the podcast either. <laughs> there we go. Uh, well, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just sticking with the juice. You were asking what's in here. The you don't know, do you? You no, forgot I, at the point of like the 17th fruit so, and vegetable item. So the thing is, this is a combination juice because I had a little bit of the morning smoothie left over, and the morning smoothie had some orange. Yeah. Apple, pear, papaya, and pineapple. Okay. Cut with a banana yeah. and a little bit of um, uh, creme fraiche, but strawberry 
you know, just one little spoonful in. And then I made that up as the, the morning sort of smoothie. And then after you'd wash the dishes. Uh, well, no, then I had a little bit left and I was making up the old vegetable juice. And so this one is a, actually an easy one. This is just a couple of carrots, some cucumber and tomato. That's some guy that you followed. That Jason Vale. That's right. Yeah. yeah, so I did I did that and then I thought, well, I've got this leftover other juice. So I just poured it in and that's what it looks like. It's uh, a bad transmission. It's not too offensive though, is it? No, no, no. And it tastes really good actually. You can tell that it's fruity. Yeah. So there's a little bit of that in, so it's, uh, you know, keep that, keep that handy so yeah. I don't forget to drink it. It, ju it just becomes a meal. It, you know, that's the other side, is you start having these there's things. Lots of roughage. There's a lot of roughage. <laughs> 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 Which again, you know, there's, there's I, I had put in some spinach into one and I just ran it through the old, the Ninja. And so just threw it in and, and that's all always good, but man, it. Uh, Amy, it made, uh, Amy made some green pancakes the other day. Really? She was like, because I don't really like banana. Okay. It's blended. It's the, yeah. the, the taste of it is okay, but it's a texture thing. Okay. Well, it's like, it's like it's me and mangoes. I, what, yeah, I yeah. like mango, the taste, but I don't like the texture. It's one of those things, isn't it? But yeah. it's okay in like a shake. Yeah. So she made these banana pancakes, which are all good. Yeah. Yeah. But she, I was like, what's wrong with this banana? Pancakes are green. She was like, no, there's spinach in there. <laughs> and she blended the Nutribullet in the Nutribullet. Yeah, she yeah, blended yeah, the spinach yeah. in there. Yeah. And they're actually all right. Okay. Yeah, pretty good. You had no idea there was spinach in them at all. I mean, they were dripping in honey. Right. <laughs> so you couldn't taste anything. So they were, you know, they didn't turn out to be the uh, the most healthy, but they were, you know. But they're spinach. I never thought of doing that. But it's it's amazing what you can put through the, the Nutramix or the, yeah. the Ninja. I mean, it's amazing the yeah. things that you can actually do. I saw one the other day. It's uh, three ingredient gooey fudge brownies. And it's made okay. with banana, mm -hmm. cocoa, and Nutella. Gooey, yeah. And that's all it is. Mm. And then you, you put it into the dish, and I, I don't know if you... Just let it even just set. Or let it, yeah, let it set and get cold, and then you just kind of scoop it out, and apparently it's pretty good, but I'm thinking... Amy makes black bean brownies. Well, really? Really nice. I like the recipe for that. Yeah, yeah, she makes them. They're really, really nice. Black beans. Yeah. So soak up the beans and. Yeah. So they're really, and they're really fudgy. All right. But you wouldn't. I mean, they're not. They don't taste of black beans. Okay. And I like black beans anyway, but I'm not sure about black beans and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, in a fish water or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know. But yeah. now she makes black bean brownies and they're really good. All right, I want to try so those. I get to uh, make something next time. Okay. Fire the recipe over. Yeah. Too. And you know that makes me think of some of the old shows I used to do with. Uh, Good old chef Andy. I got to go back and call some of those up because those yeah, were just classic. Yeah, put them up on the, yeah. on the site. You got to do that. I got one. I got a, a, a wonderful three-part series going up of old shows, and it, it goes back to the e-waste day that we had earlier in the year. Oh yeah. With EnviroServe guys, and I went back to EnviroServe and did some interviews, and we, we created some content. It was great. And when we were sitting there, it was interesting because. The folks were saying, you know, you were the, you were one of the first supporters of our pro of what we're doing here back in you know 2007, and I'm like, really that long ago? And so I went and c called up all of the previous interviews that I'd done with them, and I've got them all, and I'm going to put them all up because yeah. they're timeless, timeless, and it's interesting to listen to the voices because they've changed a little bit. 14 in, years ago. 14 right? years, yeah. yeah, and just in. You know, the, the, from a startup to maintaining the business, and it's just interesting to hear the stories. So. Do you know what's amazing to me is like the message hasn't changed. No. I, I was sat, I would, it would be, it's over 20 years ago, so it's probably, what, it's, you know, it's 25 years ago, I would have been sat in my, as we would call it in the UK, year five, um, 26 years ago, year five. So it's before, it's, it's the penultimate year of what we call junior school. Uh -huh. And our teacher there, Everyone's got like a couple of teachers that really has an effect on them, right? And yeah. it leaves an impression. And, and he did, Mr. Mate, his name was. Mr. Mate. Yeah. And he was said, fantastic. Hey, mate. He was really, really cool. <laughs> He's one of the main reasons I love VWs, because he had a, a Scirocco. Of course. All good teachers had Scirocco. Yeah, a new one, when it, the Mark II, when it came out. And then he also, he was running to his motorbikes and he had a limp because he'd come off of his bike when uh -huh. he was younger. And one of his legs was, you know, this is like, yeah. happened in the 80s. There's no. There's no way they're going to sort that out in the surgery, yeah. you know, in them days. So he had a limp, but he was really, really cool. And he sat down and told us, we're going to run out of oil. 
There's going to be wars over it. There's going to be wars over the currency that it's traded in. This, 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 and this. And he said, but all of that's irrelevant because it's going to kill the planet first. Yeah. And that was, like I say, 25, 26 years ago. Now, nothing's changed <laughs> at all. <laughs> Same conversation. Except for we use more of it. Yeah. And the planet's degrading quicker. And it's, has the urgency changed? Yeah. Total Oil came to see me on Saturday, no, Sunday. And the guy's walking around the shop and he said to me, I'm the only, and he said, this is not blowing smoke. This, yeah. I am the only garage, the only garage that he deals with. And Total is everywhere yeah. here because they're a fantastic brand. Yeah. The only garage that will not accept plastic cartons with their oil in, in spite of the fact that they're 15, 16% cheaper. Mm because we don't like the plastic waste. Yeah. I won't have it. I won't save 15% on oil to throw plastic away. It's yeah. not acceptable. It's yeah. just not acceptable, is it? I mean, some of the cars we keep on the road, they're killing the place. Yeah. It's our job to keep them on the road as best as we can, but I'm not gonna go and throw plastic in the bin because I know, cynically, or whatever you wanna call it, that these, these things are getting dumped not yeah, necessarily yeah, properly, yeah. and they're not being recycled. Well, look, even if they are being recycled, that, that, well, that plastic at some anyways. point, it's going to end up either in landfill, it's going to end up wherever it is, it's going to get burned. It's, either way, that, that petrochemical product, yeah. the container, is having an impact on the environment. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's unreal to me. Like, we just had, we so Total won't be the only brand. That, they just told us, look, this is your warning, the end of the month, told us a couple of weeks ago, 14% increase on oil price. Yikes. Now, obviously now we've got to hedge a little bit, but the cash isn't there. We need yeah. to buy some oil quickly at the lower price so we can slowly implement the increase. Mm. Otherwise, somebody that's paying, let's say 500 dirhams for their oil on a service, is not yeah. gonna have to pay 600 dirhams. Yeah, yeah. Next no one wants to do and that. It, and, and it's, that's, a lot of people haven't earned a salary for over a year. Yeah, or, 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 salaries, salary. or salaries have been cut. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's, it's tough. People are still losing jobs. So the answer is go to plastic cans and get it cheaper and you don't have to, no. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's non-negotiable. They, they should be rewarding you for being. It's non-negotiable to me. It's absolutely yeah. non-negotiable. And obviously, you know, I mean, they, they were staggered. We, we'd got one of the old oil drums, we cut it in half down the length and then the two halves that we got that would sort of like you'd make a barbecue with. Yeah, yeah. We cut those in half and then made four bins that we screwed to the wall for the, each ramp has got a bin. We had a full barrel at our end bin and the other far ramps have got these little quarter of a barrel bins that are screwed to the wall, which just keeps the place tidy. Yeah. And he was in there, he was, he was staggered. Oh, I was taking pictures. I'm going to send these to the head office in Paris. And we, obviously this, this won't go out now until they move, so it's cool to let it out of the bag, but we're making a seat out of a drum. Okay. Not the old rubbish one where people just take the top of it off and put yeah. a cushion on it. We've put it on its side and we're cutting the back out of it. And, oh, nice. And, and it's going to look quite cool. Now we're going to paint it up in We Will Fix It colours and give it to Colin as a moving in present for their new office, right? Yeah. Probably won't want it because it's not going to fit in with the nice <laughs> swanky place, but it's something and it looks cool. And he saw it when we were making it and he said, I'm all about that. So I thought, okay. We'll, let him, we'll give him the first one. Plus, it's the first one we've made. It might be rubbish. Yeah. We use it as a training exercise before we put one in our reception. <laughs> anyway, so he's taking pictures. Guys, this is incredible. I want to. I want to send this to Paris and let them know about it and let them know. Yeah. And it's like there are there are people that care, but are there enough people in in enough influential positions that care? Yeah. That's the concern because you get to a point where. There's too many, there's too many people losing out if things change. Like then it. those people at the moment yeah. are so powerful because of the money they, yeah. they hold that it's impossible to ignore them, surely. I, 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 I'm, I, I hope Total and I hope all these oil companies wake up and say, okay, well, we'll use recycled containers, et cetera. But the, the one with Total, it, it, it just boggles my mind in a sense when he's, when he's talking about this because that same gentleman who's going to go back to Paris, go back to the head office, is going to go to, you know, the Carrefour Express and he's going to want to buy, you know, some pasta and, yeah. and whatever, whatever, and he's going to get to the counter. There are no bags yeah, yeah. at Carrefour. any grocery store anywhere 
in France. Yeah. Like you can't get... You, yeah, I mean, they've implemented it here now as well, haven't yeah. they? On some of the sites. They've not done you, the main ones. You yet. can't get plastic. Like at all. And it's there you go. So. so you bring your own thing. You bring instant change of the thinking. Well, this has to happen in all industries. Yeah. And, you know, okay, so we don't want to have things. So then they make a better storage system where they can drop off barrels yeah. for you. Or well, you go to Carrefour now yeah. and... Uh, I noticed, obviously, the, the detergent section. Right. You wash in laundry detergent. Yeah. There's a bottle that you have to bring back and refill. Yeah. And I love that's, it. That's great. And then I noticed on the um, dairy and uh, fresh aisle, there was eggs loose in yeah. the basket with <laughs> exactly. bring back your own egg container. What a great idea. Fantastic idea. It's time to start doing this stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's like, yeah, I was over at Tavola, the same thing. You could get all your cleaning supplies. Instead of going buying another Clorox container or whatever you're using, just go and fill it up. There yeah. you go. Bring, your, bring it back and fill it up. It's like, why not? It's no brainer. It makes total no. sense. Anyway, that's the whirlpool to rise. There, there we go. Now we can start our show. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it is Potaholics time. PowerWorks with Glenn Power from PowerWorks Automotive is here in the Epic Podcast Studio at the Rolf Hotel downtown Dubai. That's where we come to you from. We're going to talk about cars and more right here on the podcast. We've already set the world straight. I feel like we've already done the show. Yeah, yeah I just like dropped the mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing left to talk about. Driving in today, I gotta say, people are getting crazy on the road. I don't know if How it's- How busy is it? How I, mentally busy is it out there? Yeah, I don't understand. Can't wait for Ramadan. <laughs> just like, I you, like Ramadan anyway. Yeah, yeah, I do too. And, I, it, and I, I, think it, I think it helps, it's good sort of, it's a great time because yeah. obviously we're not necessarily participating in yeah. the whole fast and the prayer and yeah. everything else. It's yeah. not we're, we look, do. Neither of us are Muslim. Yeah. And but, so we're, but, we're experiencing Ramadan from yeah, well, a whole different perspective. We like a festival though, don't we? Yeah. You know, it's, and, and I like the whole, I like the feel of I it. Like I the like the fellowship. I just like the yeah, family. Yeah. I like, and it, and I, I really feel bad for our, our friends who are, are Muslim and, and this is the holy month yeah. that is not the usual holy month, you know, you know yeah. the, the meals and the sharing and the tents and the, not happening because well, of the pandemic, second happen. year in a row. Yeah. Yeah. So let's hold. Yeah, I hope it's the last one. That's but, it, exactly. Yeah, it's really busy out there. Yeah. Like, it's <laughs> a disaster driving. To, like I spent four hours in a car the day before yesterday yeah. because I took the girls to school, nursery, went to work. That right. was over an hour. And then I had to go back home and then back to work and then again back home at the end of the day. Yeah. And it was four hours in total. Yeah, I don't miss those days. Ridiculous. Yeah, I don't miss those days. Like, yeah. Just, and, and it's. And then you hit traffic and. Well, this is the thing. The roads are like not up to it for the development. You yeah. know, they're, they're so hard to keep up with the road building. Like, they're knocking housing estates up now in. <laughs> A couple of months. Yeah. You know, and it's impossible to put the foundations in for a bridge for a flyover that needs to be yeah. there for a roundabout. Yeah. I mean, that's two years. Where the Etihad rails running in across parallel to the 611 now, where we are, I mean, that's not, they're not hanging around there. Those guys are whipping the flyover up like yeah. real quick. And obviously, that's a priority because that's a huge economic yeah. piece of infrastructure. Right? It's, it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see and hear these. I well, miss that actually. It's going to add oh, man. to the insert expletive here sort of thing you know yeah. it's, it's not um, it's it's really difficult I mean then we've got the summer coming yeah. hopefully international travels back on and people are traveling safely and, and, yeah. and can get out of there all, but that's all I don't know last, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking fall I mean I, I, I yeah look. I think so yeah end of the school year and and, yeah. and summer I'm comes thinking, and I think it's just going to be a hang tight again till, I, yeah till Christmas for, for those that celebrate it or I, travel during yeah. that I think we're going to have flare-ups right through the summer. And, you know, and yeah, herd, herd immunity will start and more vaccines are happening, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't think we're going to be back in a comfortable position till at least the fall, you know, whatever that new normal is going to be. Yeah. I think summer is going to be interesting. And there's places I just, you know, I'm looking at numbers right now. Like, let's take, you know, France. Well, you know, the Total, Mr. Total is in, on my yeah. mind right now. But France, I mean, they had 30,000 cases yesterday. France is a small place. Yeah. <laughs> 30,000 cases. I'm talking to some folks and they're saying, oh, you know, what down in, in, you know, where I'm from in this part of France, it's, it's okay. It's like, dude, it's not okay. No, no. I'm, you know, <laughs> it's not okay yet. No. 
So, and I'm thinking everyone wants to go to, to Europe for the summer, especially if you're from, you know, it's, it's just a, a great place to be. I'm thinking this won't be that summer. Well, I take the chance, you know, it's... Yeah, just hang on. Hang on, exactly. A little while longer. Yeah, and I mean, they've got all these, you've got all these events going on, you know, um, Super Bowl a few yeah. weeks ago, that was a 25% capacity in the stadium, which is yeah. a lot of people still yeah. going through turnstiles, still mm. doing all the usual car park and tailgating yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know what? I, I, I use the barometer for North America. Is the Canadian border and the American border still closed? Yeah. And they're talking maybe September. I'm going, what? Like, who's ever heard? You can't drive it. I mean, you can. Essential services and essential workers are, are crossing the border. But I'm used to being able to say, hey, let's go down to New York City for the weekend. And you just drive across the border and hit yeah. New York and come home. Yeah, that ain't happening. Yeah. Lake George, not even happening. That's like, this is huge, huge. Yeah, and we're if, a long way off yet. Yeah, I think, I think we got some time. Yeah. The, the beauty of it being so busy this morning was I got to do some car shopping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Actually, it's in the, you, know, you know the temperatures are rising here in Dubai when I'm driving in my roofless Jeep without a jacket on today. So you know, just, it was perfect temperature. And this is with speed. So you know, I'm doing 100 kilometers an hour and I don't feel like I need a jacket. So yeah, the wind over the last few days has cooled it down a little, hasn't it? A little yeah, bit it's been hot. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So it's not going to last. That's, that's the unfortunate side of things. The cars I saw this morning, one that really caught my attention and, it, and, and it's just under, I think it's the understated vehicle in Toyota's saloon lineup is the Avalon. And I saw a new Avalon this morning and you know, put the pedal to the metal to keep up so I could keep looking at it. And it was just sweet looking. It really, you know, it, it, nothing special yet. And it was, it was kind of that uh, off-white egg shelly kind of thing. Not yellow, but just beautiful, beautiful lines. I've always wondered about the Avalon, about how Lexus feel about it. Yeah. Because it's as Lexus as it can be, it, really. Well, that's the thing, because I was looking, I was going, is that a Lexus? Yeah. And, it, and I think for me, what really made me look at it and, and keep up with it was going, I don't want to own a Lexus. As much as I like it, it just has a negative thing in my head in that I see so many of them used as Uber vehicles, and it's just yeah, yeah. And the Avalon doesn't, it, it has the <laughs> Lexus look, but not quite. It's still, it, I mean, I had to take a second look, because I'm thinking, oh, that's cool. that's a, is that a new Camry? And then I realized, no, no, that's bigger than the Camry. That mm -hmm. no, that's the Avalon, and it's, it was, it's. I just think it's one of those perfect vehicles. And when you start looking at what it, I mean, it's a Toyota. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's, it's got a good pedigree. Yeah, it's going to be reliable. Yeah. It's going to be well appointed. I mean, one of the problems with the, the, for me, one of the problems with the Japanese stuff, they're never really cutting edge. There's never any. Yeah. But the benefit of that is that by the time they've implemented some tech or a new system or whatever it may be, it's figured out and it's as good as it can be. But you never get one that's sort of cutting edge, which which kind of allowed me. <laughs> which, which, hold on a second, this is a piece that they've written in there. Oh, no. You're no, so I'm just trying to enlarge you. What do they say? They, they, they are, their tagline here is, is exhilarating design meets Cutting edge technology Extreme. for a new chapter in premium. The Avalon embodies dynamic luxury at its finest. And it's very, it's weird for me how Lexus is sort of, it, it, it just looks like the Lexus, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's so uh, it's close. The same, I know it's the same car, but you don't really get that with, you know, you don't, that's very, very close. Yeah, no, it's so close, but it's just far enough away that it's not. And I mean, I mean, I'm looking at the interior of some of the, you know, the, 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 the way it, it, the futuristic design on the inside, and it just reminds me of a, a really, it reminds me of a 4x4, four four, just the leather appointment, the way it looks. I mean, I could easily see how you could get into your Land Cruiser and then get into your Avalon, and away you go. Yeah, I mean, this, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking they've really stretched the meaning of cutting edge here. <laughs> the 3.5 litre V6 engine, well, that's hardly putting edge, is it? 164,000 for the top of the line, the Avalon Limited with 3.5, and then you've got the SE version is 149. But again, it's, it's a big engine. That's, that's right up there with, it's, that's, that's knocking on the Maxima's door. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's who they compete with anyway, but it's, it's a fast car. Yeah. 
yeah, I, I, I don't know what the. Um, I mean, it's 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 great for this region. Big car. It's probably it's it's something that's too big to be found on European shores. I think. Mm. But for here in North American markets, I think it's it's probably perfect. Yeah, they, they say it's full size. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's big. I'm, I'm still back in the old days where the the Caprice Classic was a full size car, and I'm looking at the Avalon, and every time I go to rent a car and I get something, they say this is full size. I go, no, no, a Lincoln's full size. Oh, this is yeah. this is not a Lincoln Town car. Yeah, what is wrong with this key? Why is that? <laughs> you looking at the key fob? Oh no! Look at the rear AC vents. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm. It's got down at the bottom. There's a whole grid of pictures. I mean, this is fantastic audio content. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah. Well, here we are. Oh, run the Toyota, run oh the no. Toyota.ae. Toyota <laughs> I'm imagining the Toyota.com. But look at those so, AC vents straight out of the taxi grade Camry. <laughs> It is, it's, they, they, and, and the key fob. So the, the two things, uh, uh, and the sunglass holder. And yeah, exactly, so, yeah. So when I said it reminds me of a Camry, and in one sense it does, and it's, it's, it's got all these, it's got this refined leather, it's got great, you know, the buttons, and it's got great boot space, and then what do they do? They literally have on your armrest, so imagine you're sitting in the back, on the armrest, there's the AC vents coming out at you, exactly like out of a Camry. All the contact points look a little bit, mm, just, no, that'll do. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it, it, is a, it is a striking car. It looks... That like, would turn me off right away if I got in. And I'm looking at all the buttons. I'm looking at all the tech. It looks great. I'm looking at the seats. And then I'd see that. And we'd maybe go, oh, really? Yeah. Like, like I'd weird. expect that in a Wrangler. Yeah, it looks better on the outside than it does on the inside from what I can see there. Yeah. But they're making a big deal about it. having adaptive cruise and lane change assist. So I don't know how that's cutting edge. But... They won't go wrong on all the German stuff that it came out 10 years, 15, 20 years ago on that had the teeth in trouble with them. You know, you know what else they're really pushing? Heads up display. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, okay. You can get that on a go-kart now. Oh, man. But, yeah. I mean, it's got a look. I, I guess it's, it's like anything, right? If you, if you own a Camry and you're thinking, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know I'm, I'm in my mid-40s, late-40s. Time to move up to the next thing in the line. 165, though, you're going to get yourself a pretty decent second hand Land Cruiser for that. Yeah. So, aren't you? Mm. But do you need a Land Cruiser? That's the thing. I mean, you yeah. want one, but. Everybody needs one, <laughs> don't you? Everybody needs one. Yeah. You've got to get the kids to school somehow. So I'm doing the nursery drop off yesterday. Uh -huh. And there's. Um, in the Pajero? Yes. Yeah. And there's a. There's a very lucky and I'm sure appreciative uh, young child that gets dropped off by a uh, parent, but in a driven vehicle, chauffeured yeah. there. And it's either a navigator or a Cullinan. Uh -huh. Yesterday turned out to be the Cullinan. And there wasn't quite enough space to park the vehicle in the proper way, shall we say, against uh -huh. the curb right outside the gate. Yeah. But so they just nosed it in up over the curb and just touched up against the gate. So nobody could get past and had to walk out into the road to get around and get in. <laughs> nice. So, um, you know. Well, the, 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 the verdict on the Avalon just from taking a look and is nice from the outside, inside uh, is okay, but they've still gone retro on a few things. Like the AC. Yeah, let's call it a retro effect. Yeah, okay. We could also say lazy and cheap. <laughs> I'm going with retro. Yeah, yeah. Because they want, they, no, they, it's by design. They want you to get in and, and reminisce about when you used to take that taxi in Dubai. I know what happened there. The Lexus guy's <laughs> like, right, well, let them have the grill and the headlights, but they're not having the interior. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. They put up a fuss. Yeah. You know? they, they, they threw their toys out of the crib and said, no, you can't yeah. do it. So they said, okay, well, we can, we're going to have all this other stuff. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> So it went down. The second vehicle today that, that I, I was looking at, and, and I actually made me take a second look, was a uh, Tita. Tita mm -hmm. Saloon. Now, this is the Nissan Tita, and we, we came to the conclusion that uh, not selling so many of the Nissan Titas here, and I don't actually think they're making them anymore. What an unfortunate thing. The saloon actually was looking okay. So I, it was, you know, this is, it, it was a 1.8 liter engine. So I thought, okay, that's, oh, that's pretty big. Big for a little car. That's yeah. what I thought. Um, so it, it kind of looked nice. And it was, you know, it was, it was kind of weird because usually when you see those Nissan Titas or, and, and other things, you kind of go, hatchback, hatchback. <laughs> yeah. And this one had a full little trunk. I thought, okay, cool. And I mean, it, it was weird, but it, it was something I could see myself driving. 
Yeah, they're, they're sort of dirt cheap as well. Yeah. Uh, our neighbour had a red light ticket, so we had to get the, uh, instead of sending it to the impound, put the tracker on and leave it on this drive for 30 days, and or pay 3,000 dirhams. Right. He didn't want to pay 3,000 dirhams because he can hire, uh, rent a, it was a Mitsubishi Atrage for 1,000 dirhams a month. Wow. That's nothing, that, is it? No. Like 1,000 plus of that. So that's what he did. And he was like, you know what? 1.5 litre engine, it's okay. Does the job, he gets to and from his meetings as he needs to. He can still get the kids in the back if he needs to because it, it was the, uh, again, it's uh, the a saloon one. I mean, they do look a little bit awkward with that boot just plonked on the <laughs> it's back. It's kind of it. weird, but it's, I think that's what that yeah. kind of made it look neat. Yeah, it's, again, it's, it's one of those things where it's totally utilitarian, isn't it? It's just do a job. You need a car, it needs to be a certain price range, this is the one for you. And that sort of car isn't pretending to be anything else. You know, they're not, they're not advertising it as cutting edge technology and daring design. It's just, you need a car, yeah. it's not gonna break down, it's gonna do what it does, you can park it easy, it's a low insurance group, it's not gonna use much fuel. It's fine in terms of its environmental impact and it's not gonna cost you much to rent or to buy. I'm looking at these, you know, 19,000, 20,000 used for 2016, 2017. Yeah. Nice. Wheels. Yeah. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Because like, cars are so big. Or they, they, there's a lot more of the European way of doing things happening here now. A lot more smaller cars on the road than there are four by fours. Yeah. Relative to how it used to be, say, 10 years ago. <laughs> 20 years ago when I moved here, it was all four by fours. You had to have a four by four. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, it's still one of those where would you really give somebody who's just learnt to pass, uh, just learnt to drive something small like that? Which is, to me, what that car's perfectly designed for, mm, yeah. or a fleet. Yeah, a fleet. Or, I, I think you're right. It's that first, uh, first time driver. You're yeah. going to be doing some driving around the city. You're going to go from school to home, school to home. Yeah. Need something to get there. Do I want to get you in a, you know, a Camry or an Avalon? No. Do I want to get you a Maxima? No. I want to get you something that is. It's going to get, if it gets you know, dinged up in the parking lot or yeah. whatever, easy to repair, cost effective, can replace it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's. That's uh, probably why there's so many of them around. It's like we've said before, it just uh, doesn't pretend to be anything else. It's no. just, we have a car that will get you to and from work or yeah. to and from school. One that caught my eye this morning, though, is the Ford Figo. Yeah hatch the the sport hatch now i ford i i, I seem to have lost track of the ford figo in the last couple of years because the ford figo underwent a design change and i'm looking at this figo and i'm going is that a focus and yeah they rounded it off it used to be really boxy yeah i remember you tested one on the radio i did and it was it was that boxy thing i loved it though i mean it was it was spectacular now i'm looking at it and it's not a bad thing but it is a logical relative of the focus because it just looked like a small focus to me yeah and i'm just going wow that's sweet what i mean what a wonderful looking machine and you know it, it just shares so much of the design pedigree of of that focus you know with the lines and everything it's just really a small yeah, version see, of the, it. see the breed in it yeah Put yeah. the right down to the grill. I mean, it in, and it was really that hatchback bit where it, it sort of the, the, the lines faded as it was coming off the back, and I just went, "Wow!" Yeah, I don't think we we don't I don't think we get it that in the UK. We get the Fiesta in the UK. Mm. I don't think we get that, but you can get. I think I've seen a couple of Fiestas here. They maybe have been imported. Yeah, they don't see. Yeah, I don't think you sell them here. Yeah. But the, you know. Again, I mean, you liked it when you had it, right? Yeah. I, I Zips was, around town, no problem. Yeah. Parks really easily. And you're not always in the petrol station. Yeah, you use no fuel. That was the thing. And all the, and all the Ford stuff now, as with most of the European Focus vehicles, they're small engines, but they're turbocharged. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of power. You know, you're getting as much power out of that 1.5 turbo as you would out of a any muscle car from the 80s, yeah. you know. Yeah, so it's, for sure. it's, it's just, just the way things are going. And they now have started to make them look desirable. Whereas before well, yeah. they were just, uh, people are gonna buy it because of the cost rather than what it looks like. You know, you know what I feel? I mean, they've, they've played around with the interior. There's one thing that I still, I'm, I'm always surprised with cars. You get in, you, you ever use the 12 volt 
uh, power outlet in a car? No. Why do they keep putting them in? Like, who is using those? Ridiculous. Uh, the, but every car I get into, and this this Ford Fiesta, this Ford Fiesta, the Ford Vigo, I'm looking at the inside of it. It's got two USB ports right up, you know, by the, the shifter. Great. And then it's got the 12 volt thing, which could be used as a lighter as well. But who's using those? Like, why are they even there anymore? Ridiculous. I don't get it. No, I don't get it. Nostalgia? And every single charger that you put in yeah. blows the fuse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Every time. The amount of times, like, we'll we'll do, like, a, a service on a car or whatever, and we'll say, oh, we changed you the fuse for the 12-volt socket. Didn't know it wasn't working. Yeah, because no one it. uses it. Because there's a USB port directly yeah. to put all phone chargers come with the USB cable, right? Yeah. And that's what originally what they were for. Yeah. Just phone charging, and, and people that used to use the old TomTom -tom or Garmin sat naps that... Right, okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. You, you plug them in, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about the Passat, right? I remember having a Passat in... At VW, I not, had not been there very long, maybe 2006 it was, on the current model at that time. And there was a 240 volt inverter fitted in the back, <laughs> as standard. <laughs> really? From the factory. Wow. In case you want to run a fridge off it in yeah. the sat. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, you can, yeah. you know, if I suppose, suppose it's a Passat, you could technically use it as a as a car to be chauffeured, and you could do your I blow dry your hair in the back, or yes, but it, yeah, yeah. Why? Why exactly? You know, just, why? Just, put, I mean, I, I'm all about obviously everything like this will wirelessly charge with the cover on it, right? So right. I'm all about that, you know. Then and I hired a, I think it was a, it was a Hyundai or a Kia when we were back in the UK a couple of years ago, and you just put your phone on the centre console. Yeah. And it's and it's rubber pad and it's sided so it doesn't slide around. It just charges, it charges. wirelessly. Imagine, that's all. That's the life. Get on with it. Yeah, do that. You know what? I was looking at this Figo today. You know what actually caught my attention above all things, is, and I was starting to think about okay, inexpensive car. Yeah. But it looked rich, and you know it didn't look cheap. So I, you know, it's kind of fun because you no one wants to own an inexpensive car, and then you look at it and you just go, oh, that's a cheap cheap piece of steel that you got there. Yeah. And the first thing that came to my, that caught my eye, because I was trying to figure out as I was driving beside it, and they probably thought I was a stalker, why is that car so attractive? And I realized it's a paint job. And I wonder if they hadn't put a couple extra coats of paint on it, because it just had a richer texture in the paint. And more I, luster. To, yeah, more luster. Probably, yeah. And I don't know, when you look at some of these very affordable cars, and you look at the paint job, just, I mean, it's painted, but it doesn't have, it's not bold. It's, it doesn't have luster. It really looks like they put two coats on. Or, yeah, the Figos used to be like gray or green or yeah. like a, just a, a flat yeah. blue or something, weren't they? They were never like a nice deep yeah. color. And so they've, they've done that. They've started to, yeah. to put the range on it. It's just like, wow, this is nice. I kind of like it. Yeah. So little things. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's technically rolling something in glitter, isn't it? Yeah. But it makes a difference to what we were saying about the whole Skoda thing uh, a week ago, where it's image. Yeah. And Ford are in a good position because they don't have that necessarily. Mm. People know what they are, you know. They make yeah. a, they do a GT40, which very few of us are ever going to be able to buy. <laughs> and they do a, they do a, a silly Mustang and then you can go and get one Hennessy if you want, if you want the thousand horsepower out of it. And, or you can go right through from a Figo all the way yeah. through and get yourself an F-150. Yeah. So people know what they do and, and there's not that same, oh, I don't want to drive a Ford. Yeah, there, there was that time where Ford was a little, little bit like an Alpha. This is, you know, 25, 30 years ago. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> F-O-R-D, fix or repair yeah. daily. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, and I'm thinking, that's Alfa Romeo. And Ford was, in, but Ford's not like that now. Yeah. I think they've, um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of partnership going on between Ford. There's Ford, Volvo, Mazda, yeah. Land Rover to a certain extent, all sort of doing similar things, working together. And, you know, I, I think some of the cars don't make any sense to me. I've got no, <laughs> I, for no rhyme or like reason. What? Like I, what? I don't understand. I don't understand the Ford Edge ST. Ford Edge ST. Why do you need a sports version of the sort of mid-size SUV? I don't, I don't get the Edge at all anyway. It's like, it was my favorite vehicle to drive. That was, that's what, the Ford Edge was one of the vehicles and, and I, it's just not, just not to my taste. I mean, I got into it, it's functional. 
I didn't particularly love it. Mm -hmm. It was one of those vehicles I left in the driveway. Yeah, Drove I, for a day and said, you know, you guys can come and pick it up anytime you want. I like the Explorer just because I like it. Yeah. And I think you're getting, effectively for me, from how it looks and how it goes and drives, you, you're almost getting yourself a discovery yep. for half the price. Oh, there's no question in my mind. And, and I love I think, the Explorer. You know, I do like the Explorer. The 4 by 4 works on it fine. They're well appointed. But, you know... The expedition is what it's all about. It's got mental. Let's get a big one. You get in the. You know, it's funny though. You look at the expedition, and it's 2021, and you get behind the expedition, and I'm always looking at it. I'm going, the rear suspension. <laughs> Why? It, it's almost like they've they've just bolted the body onto this chassis that hasn't really changed in a long time. Yeah. And I know it has, but the way it's lifted out of the shop, out of the, out of the factory floor, it's got the weirdest look from the back. I mean, it, I, I just don't get that. Toyota, they, they kind of mask it a little bit with some trim, Nissan, the same thing, Ford. Yeah, but if you've got an Expedition, you're only ever seeing it from the front as you get in. That's <laughs> true. To the you back never, seat. Yeah, you're never going to you're gonna be driven in. Yeah. You're never going to see but, it from behind. But what a machine. I mean, yeah. it's, you can, it's just, that's the way you want to go. Yeah, if you're going to do it, do it right, yeah. I, I do like those those big American, unnecessarily big. Like you get in, you see the Denali, oh, it, Yukon, you, XL. Yeah. You're gonna, if like, you're, have you seen the new ones? I saw one the other day and it's just like, oh my. A limousine. It's beautiful. It's huge. It's beautiful. Yeah. Just beautiful. And, and of course, if you're going to be getting a, a Yukon, got to get the you get, getting any of those GM products. You got to get the Denali version. Of course you have. It's like, <laughs> <What's the point? laughs> it's like it's, you just want to be able to it's say, like, "What are you driving?" I'm driving the Denali yeah, it's out like, there. Like buying a 1.6 Golf. No. Yeah. GTI. Just put a few more thousand down and get the GTI. And, and hey, look. You know, we love we love the Nissans. We love the Toyotas. What does the Secret Service, the CID guys? who are protecting the royal families, what do they drive here? GM? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're all driving the Yukons. Yeah, yeah. We've all, you know, everyone's seen home. them. We all watched Homeland, right? Yeah, they're all driving they're Driving the GMs. Yeah, yeah, everyone's driving them. And, it, and it's like, you know, oh yeah, okay, it's just sponsored on TV. Maybe it is. But you see those guys pull up at you here, and you see this big black Yukon coming We've up behind you. driving the on the motorway and seeing them going the other way with the lights yeah, on. And guys the... flashing the lights off the grill. Yeah, it's yeah. like, they're not doing that in the Toyota or the Nissan. They're yeah. doing that in the, in the Yukon. You don't get the same finish or luxury. doesn't matter what Toyota it is. doesn't matter what. Yeah. And it's nothing against the cars. No, no, no. You know, not it's at nothing all. nothing against the cars. We love them. You get in a Nissan Patrol, the door, the leather doesn't fit on the door card. Yeah, I don't understand It's that. like, I don't understand completed. That. <laughs> Come on. That's not, there's no benefit to that at, at all. You know, yeah. they're costing you more on leather, just make it fit. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, I don't get it. There was somebody that came up with a reason for it. Yeah. Trimmer had a day off. Yeah, makes sense. Well, man, I'm going to make them all look like this now, otherwise they'll know it was a mistake. I don't know. Yeah, but don't know. you don't get the same finish on the Japanese stuff as you do on the, um, on the sort of the top end, like those, those Yukons. I mean, the XL is, yeah. A fantastically huge car. Yeah, it's just giant. unnecessary. It's yeah. so long. And yeah, it yeah. almost looks like it's a joke because it's yeah. trying to. It's going to stop. No, it's going <laughs> no, to stop. No, no. no. And, it's, and then it's like there's one of the wheels going. there, and then it's still not stopped. <laughs> so. Heavy as anything. Great in the desert, yeah. but, well, but but hey, you don't stop. That's the no, thing. But just keep going. But you yeah. got to keep going. But you just yeah. power through. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're heavy. They're big. They're bold. Yeah. And that's the, the perfect example. Don't stop. Yeah. Don't stop. I mean, they're doing nothing for the environment. No. Nothing whatsoever. Yeah. But you, the, the, there's a reason that they're used, and, that, and I think oh, the, the the new ones are just straight. They've they've redone the body lines. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and while ever they're making cars like that, no matter what we say about the environment and people's people's opinions of it, you cannot get that. Regardless of the impact, if you take the environment out of it, what that GMC Yukon can do. Unfortunately, you can't get it any other way yeah. at the moment. Until we've got clean electricity to charge electric vehicles, there's no way of getting that. Yeah. Or hydrogen fuel cell. And hydrogen fuel cell in one of those things, no problem. Probably do. But we're not there yet. No. Man, there we go. What's going on in the shop? Now that we're like, you know, 45 minutes into the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, top of the notes, what's going on in the shop? Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, the, the, the biggest thing at the moment is we, like one of the biggest problems I've got in there now, we've got two, 
two vehicles where the, the customers have supplied parts. Oh. And we're on the third attempt now with, with aftermarket parts. And it's sort of like, you know, we're willing to help, of course, and we don't want you to have to spend unnecessarily if you, yeah. if you can help it. But we, you, we get to that awkward conversation where we say, look, we've only charged you once for the labor and we've done the job three times, what do we do? We need to, they, we either supply you the right part or I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to pay what you owe and, and yeah. take the car away because we can't keep doing it. Because yeah. it's not even the matter of taking the parts on and off. In this instance, it's the thermostat housing and one of the pipes that connects onto it on a BMW. Thank you, whoever invented this. <laughs> there, was a, there was a smart idea at the time and it hasn't held yeah, the test well, of time. It's just like it's not perfectly made the housing, so the pipe mm. doesn't quite seal on it. And okay. you know, yeah. three times that we've tried, and it's it's not having it. So we've we've got that awkward. Oh, well. And it's the same on we're doing uh, just doing a couple of repairs on an air cooled um, combi van, and the intake manifold cracked. Uh -uh. So as we took it off. It was cracked and it fell apart. So we said, look, we either need to get a new one or we're going to try and weld it, but it's not ideal. Yeah. Because if the surface isn't perfectly straight, the rest of the manifold won't bolt on. Right. Well, we'll try and weld it then, because I don't want to wait. And then in taking it to their welder for them to do, because our welder wouldn't touch it, yeah. they've lost, lost the stud out of it. There we go. So now I can't bolt the thing back on anyway. It's like, great. <laughs> So these things just happen, you know, it's just part of it. Yeah. We'll get there. But there's there's plenty of stuff going on. We've not had any any major disasters. There's there's every now and again the odd interesting thing to do. We've got a, a head gasket to do on an Austin Healy, which is ongoing Ooh. at the minute. Okay. And that's an old thing that, that always turns heads and has plenty of admirers. But it's, it's relatively normal stuff. Plenty of people doing what they should, I think. A lot of people are catching up now with mm. servicing that they maybe put off last year when yeah. they were unsure about money. And I got, stuff. I got one of those. I got a, you know, nothing, nothing major, but I got a, I got one of, one of the, uh, one of the jeeps needs to come in just for a service, and I'm thinking yeah. probably needs brakes. <laughs> I mean, not that it needs them because I'm not really driving it, but it's just, you know, I can, yeah, probably need to check the brakes, and actually, probably need to check the transmission engine mount because. It, it idles a little rough. Yeah. And I'm going, it's like, well, my other one doesn't. So I'm going, the only thing that would make it idle like that is one of the mounts yeah. that probably has been cracked for quite a while because it's been doing this for quite a while. And, uh, you know, little things. It's just like, probably got to get this in and get it just, you know, it's just time to do it because yeah, it's going to catch up with me eventually. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> it's, it's all about... It's, it's all about getting it done while it's a minor issue yeah. rather than doing it when it's uh, there's consequential damage or there's yeah. there's other things that have been affected by it because we've put it off for a while. And look, we, we understand that that's like, say, we're getting a lot of people in at the minute that are catching up from the year before. And yeah. you know, somebody called me and said, uh, 90,000 service on a X-Trail. It was a Nissan of some description yeah. anyway. That's, I can't remember exactly because I wasn't really that interested, but it was a <laughs> Nissan. And that's the point I just went. But uh, they, they wanted to do a 90K. I was like, it's relatively minor. Oil and filter and a good inspection, you'll be yeah. fine. Oh, yeah, but we didn't do the 80. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so it's not only is it overdue, but you've also missed a more major service. Yeah. And that creates a problem. Yeah. Because then you've got two services in effect. Yep. Less the oil, I suppose, to pay for. But really, we should be flushing that out because twenty k on a on any engine oil, regardless of the brand and how good it is, is, is a yeah. lot in this climate. Man, I mean, if there's one thing I do, is I'll just drop into the Enoch Epco station and yeah. say, guys, change up my oil, and yeah. I watch them. Like I'm down there with them, <laughs> like because I don't want the guy doing any fun, you know, funny stuff. Not that they would, but it's like, oh, hold on, what are you doing there? Yeah. You know, I'm putting, I'm putting back in your oil thing. What, what are you doing with that silicon tape? Yeah. No. So I don't want to leak it. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. So, but exactly. you know, at least change the oil. <laughs> That's yeah. At least, it's uh, the least you can do. It just, it's just, a, it's a sort of minimum requirement. You know, yeah. it's, it's all about, and, and people hear it, people understand it. Yeah. And you can't help it. You drive by the places that do them every day. Like it's, there's no excuse. It takes 15 minutes, if that. Yeah. The guys are fast. Yeah. Exactly. It's like it takes no time. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very important. There's, there's, there's a lot of aspects to a service that, that go beyond, of course, the oil and filter. Well, no, then the, I mean, I, there's all the other stuff. And I, when those guys, I had a guy yesterday filling up with gas, oh, you better put some cleaner and look at your gas cap, it's dirty. I'm going, what? <laughs> it's like, oh no, it'll help this. It's like, yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> My whole yeah. car is dirty. Take a look at it. It's not going to do anything, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've not even got. I've not even got windows in it, mate. Come on. <laughs> oh no! I picked picked up the car from the valet the other day. Three valet guys come running when I drive up. Bring back the car after they pick up. Love your car, sir. <laughs> I'm looking around. You know the Bentleys and the Mercedes. And which car do they want to drive down in park? Mine. Next thing. They can, like, you can see everything out of it. They're yeah. not going to curb the wheels, they're, yeah. you know, and they're, they're like, yes. Yeah, plus this is fine. You know, there, there's no windows. Yeah, over at Big Red while you sat by the <laughs> pool or whatever. That's it. It's like, yes. I always say to them, hey, if you want to take it for a spin, feel free. <laughs> it's like, it's Let me like, know if you think there's something wrong with it. Yeah, like, give me a rundown on it since you drive a lot of cars. Hey, we, I, I did a, uh, so one of our customers, he was a new customer at the time, but he, he and his wife are expecting their third baby, mm. and she's due sort of, day after tomorrow or something and you know what it's like here well uh -huh. due date will we'll get you injected with this nice little serum and, and the baby will be on its way sort of thing they know they don't mess around they don't leave it to nature necessarily but the baby's due in a few days they mm -hmm. live in a really really busy community and they want to be sure that they're protected from the next crazy child that jumps out in front of the car right so they want some dash cams fitted huh? the police approved now and their insurance okay. approved now so there's no gray area on it you can have them just tell the insurance you've got them. So they had the cameras, they just wanted them fit. So it's like, okay, I'll pick the car up. You've got another car. I'll yeah. take the one in case you need to go to the hospital, you can go in the other car. When this is done, I'll bring it back and I'll swap round and take the other one yeah. and bring it back. Anyway, so I get in the car and it's a Terramont. Okay. I'm thinking, yeah, I like these things, great. Yeah. It's not a proper VW, it's made in America and it's a little bit yeah. watered down, but it's, yeah, okay. it's a but, VW. Yeah. Get in the car. 13,000 kilometers on this thing. Not had its first service yet. Service due, like, comes on 1,700 kilometers yeah, to go. Okay. The customer knows about it. Yeah. I'm driving, gets to the first sort of cobbled bit of road, and the front suspension sounds like it's hanging off. <laughs> oh. 13,000 kilometers. That's wrong. Now, I counted on the way back in because of how bad the suspension was. Yeah. There was 12 speed bumps on the way into their house from the main road, let yeah. alone what I had to do to get to them. So you're probably talking every day they're doing 15, maybe 20 speed Are bumps. Are they going over them at full, full board, do you think? Each way. I don't know. I don't know. And the car's in the warranty, so I, I didn't do yeah. anything. I literally fitted the dash cam, and it was a non-invasive procedure, if you want to call it that. It was yeah. literally blank fuse hole, new pin in the back, fitted, done. Yeah. No problem. And goes in and goes out without damaging any of the systems on it, so the warrant is, remains intact. Just said to the customer, I took it back, I said, look, I'm just telling you this because it's due for service anyway, and you need to tell them about this, but the suspension's really bad. And now I'm thinking to myself, that's 13,000 kilometers. Now, there's always gonna be a bad one. Yeah. There's always gonna be something that's gone wrong on the production line or, yeah. or something that's gone wrong with the part supply for the suspension bushes, but it sounded to me like the dampers. Really? At 13,000? That's not great. But if you every journey out and every journey in, you're doing 15 yeah, speed bumps. That's it. Yeah, for sure. And who knows how fast, I mean, you know, nothing, nothing, you know, my, my wife has been known to hit speed bumps at, you know, Mary and Andretti <laughs> speed. So it's like, I've been inside, it's like, whoa! Yeah, well, I come in the car today that we've done the big suspension <laughs> repair on. And that, I mean, that's the mother of all speed bumps out there. Oh man, yeah. You know, that's why there's no yeah. Ferraris in there. The only yeah. reason there's a Lamborghini there is because you can lift the front end of those <laughs> with a button inside. The Ferraris aren't getting over it. And it's like, I saw so I came in the Jeep and I was like, yes, I can get over that and, yeah. and give it a real good test and, and I'll come in the car. That's a couple of times up and over there. Because, I mean, that is a, that is a beast of it's, people. It's huge. I, the, and I always, it's a great test on the suspension, especially in, you know, in the old, old Wranglers, because you not only do you have the dampers, the shocks, but you have that arm thing, yeah. whatever that's called, the arm. I have no idea what it does. Well, you've got a few, you've got, you've got a few suspension. I mean, the, the, the biggest. And one of those in mine needs to be that. I think you actually, you actually signed on that one said, Hey dude, you got a crack on, on that. the list last time. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the things that needs to be done because you, you notice it when you go over a bump. The way that it's traveling, that the, this is, you know, this arm, clearly uh, not traveling as it should. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. I mean, it's 
it's um, it's very difficult to it's very difficult to come across sincere when you're trying to sell when you're trying to tell somebody something which you ultimately have to charge them for. Yeah, Do you, do you yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. it's hard for me to say. Look, obviously we've known each other for a long time. If I can sit and say to you, James, look, this is what's wrong with the car. And we really should fix it. Yeah. And you'd probably take my advice and I'm say, gonna, "Let's I'm do, it. Say, do it." Do it. It needs to be very fixed. hard. Fix it, especially as a young business where we're trying to get new yeah. customers. A lot of our customers are new, and they've never met me before, or they've yeah. never been to us before. And, and we have a situation where, hang on, you only came in for a service, and you're telling me there's an extra two k that I need to spend on it. And a lot of the time, it's prevention. You yeah. know, it's trying yeah. to prevent a bigger problem down the line. Yeah. So, so, that, so the you know, full circle back, prevention time, get things checked. Yeah, out. which is what, you know. Because it's going to start to get warm. So make sure, hey, are your tires okay? Is your air conditioning okay? Is your cooling system okay? Are your brakes okay? Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you get your, your services. Make sure all those big systems are working. Because, yeah. I, I mean, I see it every day. It's, I, I'm seeing more and more vehicles on tow trucks because it just heats up a little bit and the cooling system's not working well. Yeah. And away you go. Yeah. And you get caught out. And we saw one the other day. Again, I, my wife was going, what are they doing? Folks had, car had broken down. And there, were, there were a number of people with the vehicle. And clearly they were on a phone to a recovery service. So I thought, okay, where they're good. And, but I thought, I don't all vehicles have to have that little reflective triangle in yeah. the, because they're putting a stone up on the, on the median. And I'm going, guys, you, you need to put that triangle up. That's why you put it. You walk back 100 meters and put the thing up so people know. No, putting stones out, fire extinguisher out. And I'm thinking, oh, you might need the fire extinguisher. Yeah. Keep that yeah. close to the car. Keep that one close to the car, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the stone was, you know, sand colored brown. I'm going, that's awesome. Excellent. It's, it's, you can see that one then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. But no, it's, it's really important to get that done. Yeah. There we go. It's easy. Yeah. Prevention better than the cure. Yeah. I'm glad you're busy though. I mean, that's the other side. Yeah, it's busy. It's, it's a matter of... One of the things that you can never predict is what you're going to find when you're doing a bigger job. You're stripping a lot of things right. down and then you say, ah, I couldn't see that before. Yeah. Or I'm in removing the part that we're changing, we find there's another issue or there's something consequential from this or there's something mm. that's actually caused this. It's always my biggest nightmare. <laughs> you take yeah. something out. Oh, going to have to do something here with your your you know, cooling system, the RAD. Oh, no. It's like going to the doctors, right, for, yeah. for a well-man checkup. Thing. Oh, I feel yeah. all right. Why do I want to go and tell me I've got X, Y, and Z wrong? Because I know for a fact there'll be something you can find. Yeah. And, it, and it's the same with the car. You know, we, we don't have... There's no way to know until we yeah. are in there. Yeah. We can see most of it. You know, there's a... There's an S6 in there at the minute where it's got an oil leak from the front crankshaft um, oil seal. But once we've taken it off and, and cleaned it up and changed the seal, we can also see a leak to the side of it from the balance shaft oil seal. Yeah. And it's like, ugh, there. And, and then the car's on the lift immobilized. Right. The front end's off the car. And that part's a day order. We didn't know. Yeah. You know, you can't just order everything for the car just in case you need it because we have to pay for that. So it's... Um, it always happens. You you can never be sure, and you try and give customers time windows and 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 prices, but they're always an estimate because yeah. there's always a, there's always something that we could find, and invariably we do end up finding or needing to replace. Now, yeah. often on stuff that we're familiar with, we can say, "Oh, there's a chance that this is going to be the problem," and we remember last time we ended up changing this right. and that. But it doesn't always, mm. you know, cars always give you something that that will shock you. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Inevitably. It's an interesting one also yesterday I was watching a tow truck corner and I think it was cornering too fast. You ever seen any vehicles fall off a tow truck? No, but I was, I've had a vehicle delivered to me that wasn't strapped down. Well, that's it. I was, cause then, then I see them going around and I'm looking and I'm noticing and it, I know cause you often get vehicles delivered to me and that guy straps them down and ties them down. Yeah. Like he's, he's doing the job, but I was watching one the other day. No, not strapped down. Like it was just sitting on there, and I'm thinking, yeah, this is dangerous. Yeah, we've had one where the car got delivered to us on an insurance recovery truck, and they'd obviously slammed the brakes on in huh. an emergency braking situation, and it hadn't been tied down, and it had slammed the front of the car into the back of the yeah. cabin of the of the truck, hit the winch and damaged the bumper, and cracked the grill, and number plate had fallen off, and all that stuff. 
plus the damage that it had done to the to the total, which wasn't my concern <laughs> happily. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it's I I don't I don't know why you would do it as the driver. What's yeah. the, it takes literally thirty seconds to to ratchet strap the one of the wheels down. Yeah, you got to do it. I mean, yeah. that's, that's <laughs> makes total sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes yeah. total sense. Yeah, it's craziness. Got some other stuff I wanted to talk about, um, and and it was just basic stuff. I'm looking. I'm, I'm mindful of the time as your your phone is ringing as well. And, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw it. That's <laughs> cool. No sense. <laughs> uh, one of the one of the ones I was I'm just interested in as we start talking about, and you you kind of brought it up with the with the Audi, the the whole issue of all these seals and preventative maintenance. So, you know, you've got oil seals, transmission seals, seals on dampers, seals on gearboxes. I know that the shocks and dampers, same thing. You can't really replace those seals. But is, is there, does it make sense to preventatively go in every 100,000 kilometers and do a big seal change? Is that something that happens or is it just prohibitive in cost? Yeah, one of the problems, as you mentioned there, with some things that the seals aren't replaceable. A lot of these mm. things aren't serviceable. So, you know, it's for the example of a damper, you, unless it's an aftermarket one that is a serviceable one, you, right. you can't service them, so you change the dampers. So it's a matter of just waiting until they fail. Yeah. And on some vehicles, they never will. You'll have them for 30 years and they'll never fail. And some I want five, that vehicle. Years, yeah. I want the one that they last 30 years. You know, it's just one of those things that... that they, Went through my fourth set on my vehicle. Yeah. Maybe yeah. fifth. <laughs> Speed bumps, heat, uh, yeah. dust. There's, yeah. you know, and... On things like the gearbox and the transmission, and, and, you know, the best thing you can do to stop those failing is to use the car. Right. Keep the oil circulating around, mm. keep the transmission warm, keep the oil flowing, change the oil regularly so it doesn't get too many contaminants in it, just to help keep those seals supple and stop them hardening too much by not being used and then they shrink a little bit and then oil starts to leak out of them. Because once that happens, that, You're that's the it. end of it. Yeah, and I've been I've been in a situation where we've changed a um, front main oil seal on a transmission and the technician is they've removed the seal with the, with the sleeve has damaged the casing of the transmission. Not necessarily something they knew they'd done or could have avoided at the time and then they put the new seal in and it nicks the new seal on the way in so right. then it goes back in the car and then the car's still leaking and it's got to come back out again now you know something you have to account for there's always going to be human error there's always going to be an yeah. issue there but that then becomes what, what was a few hours work it's a few days because then you've yeah. got to change the casing or have the casing repaired in that case we changed the casing it was just a bell out and then we changed it but it, it's not these things will always happen. There's always yeah. that potential. I mean, the best thing on any kind of, with AC, it's the same seals that fail. It's yeah. just to use the system, just to keep the car running. Yeah. That's why we say if you're leaving the car parts, you know, if people do get to travel in the summertime this year, get somebody to use your car for you every couple of days. Yeah. Even if it's just 10 kilometers up to temperature and, and around the block and what have you, it'll save so much trouble down the line. And, and I'm pretty sure Apart from the obvious things like we've talked about a lot of people living in communities with speed bumps and the yeah. heat here and the dust and everything else, one of the massive factors on car maintenance here is the fact that a lot of people here are immigrants. Mm. We're, we've all migrated from another country and yeah. we all travel for extended periods home every year. Yeah. And the cost of flights prevents us being able to go for a week every few months. We go once a year and do the tour of the family for yeah. 25, 30 days. <laughs> yeah. And and that's what people do. And, and, and leaving a car for that amount of time is, is difficult for the car to actually come back from. And you will have always this rush. And that's why I know for a fact, if people do travel this year, August is going to be a quiet month. Mm. But September is going to be boom time. Yeah. Because people are coming back to, oh, my seat doesn't work, my battery's dead, <laughs> yeah. my tyres are vibrating all over the place, I've got oil leaks that I didn't know I had. Yeah. Because the cars haven't been used. And, and for me, with the time I've been here and the problems that we see here, it's, it's down to, as I say, the obvious, but the, the thing that people don't necessarily think is a problem is the fact that the cars aren't used. Mm. You know, you see, you see older cars and it's got 20,000 kilometres on it, you think, wow. That's the one to buy. It's not it's on the one that's got a hundred thousand on at the same age because that's been driven and used, and all the problems that it was going to have have been fixed. Right. 
and all the problems that it shouldn't have aren't going to be there because it has been driven and used. Yeah. So engines never want to be turned off. Cars, suspension systems always want to be moving. When they're sat and they're sat static and all the weights on a certain particular spot, that's no good for them. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Glenn, you know what? It's time that we uh, pack things up, put Let's down the go. garage door, and we'll uh, we'll pick up this conversation because it's rocking and rolling. Thank you very much, though, as always. No, thank you.